All right, now let's continue question number 15 properties of bulk matter hydrostatics a solid sphere of radius r and density rho is attached to one end of massless spring of constant k the other end is connected to another solid sphere of same radius but density 3 rho and the whole arrangement is placed inside a liquid of density 2 rho and the system is allowed to reach equilibrium we have to see the elongation in the spring and whether the light sphere is completely or partially submerged first of all if the whole sphere completely gets submerged in that case you could see the weight 4 by 3 pi r cube rho g plus 4 by 3 pi r cube 3 rho g the weight of first weight of second and up thrust would be 4 by 3 pi r cube into 2 there are two volumes and density of liquid is 2 rho into g remember if we take both as a system the spring force will not come that gets cancelled out and I'm just making a guess and in that case you could see the total weight is exactly equal to up thrust it means in this given situation the arrangement has to be completely submerged so if the arrangement is completely submerged the light as well as heavy both are submerged so the situation would be something like this the light is here the heavy spring here and they are completely submerged and if I want to find the elongation in the spring if I consider the heaviest spring weight would be down up thrust is up and spring force is up that means for the heavier sphere the weight is 4 by 3 pi r cube 3 rho g that's a weight that should be equals to kx plus 4 by 3 pi r cube 2 rho g this is the upward component of the force the up thrust and the spring force and this is the weight and in equilibrium the heavier sphere has to be at rest so equating this and this we are going to get the elongation as a so the correct option for this question would be option number A and option number D. Now let's go to question number 16. That would also begin our next section, the integer type question. And this one is framed from rotational dynamics. A uniform circular disk of mass 50 kg and radius 0.4 meter means there is a disk I'm making the top view of given mass M and of a given radius capital R the value will place is rotating with angular velocity omega naught which is 10 radian per second about its own axis which is vertical as I said it's a top view so this is the axis and it is rotating two uniform rings of mass this and radius are gently placed symmetrically that means the second situation is going to be something like this another ring another ring is kept in this way two uniform rings of mass this much and radius this much so let small m and small r be the mass and radius of the ring respectively both are equal mass and equal radius are gently placed symmetrically so that they touch each other along the axis of the disk the figure which we have made and from this data we got to find the new angular velocity you could see the finally ring is placed completely symmetrically that means initial angular momentum is in this direction 
and the final angular momentum would also be in the z direction because it is symmetrically placed. So initially angular momentum is inside and finally also the angular momentum would be inside because of symmetry and they are gently placed so we can conserve angular momentum to find the new angular velocity. So initial angular momentum is mr square by 2 omega naught. Final for the disk mr square by 2 for the ring. Notice this is the axis. So that's going to be plus m r square or let me make it simpler for you in this situation the radius of the ring is small r which will place it as capital R by 2 but the rings axis is here that means for the ring using parallel axis shift moment of inertia is going to be 2 m r square m small r square plus m small r square into 2 for the next so that's a final moment of inertia for the system multiplied by omega so this is the initial angular momentum this is the final angular momentum and on solving you're going to get omega as 8 radian per second so 8 would be the correct integer we'll continue with question number 17 all right Question number 17 says the work function of silver and sodium are 4.6 and 2.3 electron volt respectively. The ratio of slope of stopping potential versus frequency for silver to sodium. Let's check it out. Stopping potential V is H nu minus of H nu naught. So stopping potential is going to be h by e nu minus h by e nu naught. Now you could see we got to plot the graph of v versus nu. So this is the slope and you could see the slope is independent of nature of material because it's h by e. Therefore the answer the ratio has to be 1. Let's go to question number 18. A bob of mass m suspended by a string of length L1 is given minimum velocity required to complete a full circle in vertical plane. That means here is m L1. So it's given a velocity root 5g L1 quite obviously. At a highest point when it reaches the highest point it will have a speed of root g l1 it collides elastically with another bob of mass m so this has reached the highest point and there is another bob this hits it and the masses are same and the collision is elastic that means velocity will mutually interchange so the new bob will get a speed root g l1 while the original bob will have a speed zero but then when the new bob gets this speed the question says with another bob of mass m suspended the second bob after collision acquires minimum speed to complete a full circle. That means this speed what the new bob gets should be equals to root of 5 g l2. And quite obviously we had to find l1 by l2 and that answer is going to be 5. So now we'll see the last pair the question number 19 and 20 all right now question number 19 particle of mass 0.2 kg is moving in one dimension under a force that delivers constant power if initial speed is zero the speed after five seconds 
it's in 1D, so quite obviously power f dot v, f v cos 0. This is m a, a is dv by dt into v. So you get p by m dt equals to v dv. t equals to 0, the speed is 0. And we got to find the speed at 5 seconds, so that's v. And on solution of this integral, you're going to get speed in meter per second as 5. Let's go to question number 20. Freshly prepared sample of radioisotope of half-life 1386 second has activity 10 raised to the power 3 dps. That's a given value of log, which is standard. We got to find the fraction of initial number of nuclei that will decay in first 80 second. So let's say n by n naught is e raised to the power minus of lambda t and this is going to be e raised to the power minus natural log 2 by t half into t. Placing t half 1386 and t after 80 second it has been said will get this as e raised to the power minus 0 0.04 and this can be written as 1 minus 0 0.04 by the simple expansion of log e raised to the power x 1 plus x by 1 factorial on and on but we have a very small value so we are legitimate to limit ourselves here. But the question has says the fraction of number of nuclei that has decayed. N is the number of nuclei remaining. So quite obviously 1 minus N by N naught is going to be 0 0.04. So N naught by N by N naught is going to be 0 0.04. And we require the answer in percentage. So once we multiply this, that's going to give us 4%. So the correct option for answer number 20, the integer is 4. So well students, this was the solution for physics of JE Advanced 2013 Paper 1 Code 8. I wish you all the best for the examination and hope you will come out with the flying colors. Thank you very much.